Shalom Israel. Meaning all praises to the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh, in the name of the King and the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, and double honors to the elders in Israel that rule well. Obviously, you can tell by the title, we have a spiritual spa. Is there multiple gods in the Bible? Is there only one God in the Bible? Something to that effect. Here with Brother Yaramiah, Yaramiyahu, Brother B. Woody, would you like to introduce yourself? And a brief synopsis of what your stance is, I guess. Uh, Shalom Israel and anyone else who may be listening. Uh, my name is Jeremy Yahoo. Uh, I'm basically coming off the premise that Ashadua la ilaha illallah, which means I bear witness that there's no God but God, and that God I'm referencing is Yah, or some people say Yahweh, or Yahweh, and um, and either God him. Um, and, uh, I'm just here with peace and love to everybody that might be listening and keep an open mind. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> Khan, all praises. I'm just saying there's a tiny piece of lag, tiny piece of lag upon your voice. So hopefully that'll get ironed out and we shall not have too many interruptions through technical difficulties. But as we, um, discussed prior to having this right now, I'd like to go through some scriptures where I think you may go or where I think you may go to build a premise or give understanding to the audience of what you believe or why you say what you say. So I'd like to go through that. And I think that's the best way to go through it in terms of attempting to rebut your position or the reasons that you have your position. And then I'd like to go through some questions that I think you won't be able to answer and still honestly hold to the premise you've put forth initially or originally, <laughs> originally, that's a new one. All right, so Second Kings chapter 19, verse 18, it says, I, all, as I always say, make sure you're reading them in context, you understand who it's talking about, what it's talking about, because one of us could be, or both of us could not have the understanding, but it could be right there. Anyway, Second Kings chapter 19, verse 18, it says, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone, therefore they have destroyed them. And then Brother Yarmayahu uh, B. Woods, if you want to chip, chip in, chime in at any point, let me know and ask questions or whatever. Basically, yeah, okay. So if you, if you don't have a question, that's fine. If you do have a question, that's also fine. I'll just keep going until you interrupt me. So Second Chronicles chapter uh, 13, verse 9. Have you not cast out the priests of Yahweh, the sons of Aaron and the Levites, and have made you priests after the manner of the nations of, the, of other lands? So that whatso, whosoever cometh to consecrate himself with a young bullock and seven rams, the same may be a priest of them that are no gods. Isaiah 37 and 19, And have cast their gods into fire, into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone, were, therefore they have destroyed them. Jeremiah 2 and 11, hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Jeremiah 5 and 7, how shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. When I had fed them to the full, they committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlot's house. Jeremiah 16 and 20, shall, I make, shall a man make gods unto himself and they are no gods? rhetorical question acts 19 and uh, 26 moreover ye see and hear that not alone at ephesus but almost through throughout all asia this paul hath persuaded and turned away much people saying that they be no gods which are made with hands galatians 4 and 8 how be it then when ye knew not god you did service unto them which by nature are no gods a brief in a sentence i think it's a hebraicism to say no gods and it's really talking about there's no power in them. Clearly, they're referred to as gods. So that's why I hold to that. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead, bro. No questions or comments. Okay, okay. So do you mind if I ask you one? You may ask, bro. Are there multiple gods according to the Bible? From my understanding, people that devise idols are 
believing in a vain imaginations. So what I would say is that people may have another deity, but that deity in reality does not exist because there's no power but Yah. Yah Al Shaddai is the only power. I, ho I hope that suffices. Okay. Okay. Um, so is it, is it fair to say you hold to the idea that there are no other gods in the Bible? Yes. Oh, according to the Bible, sorry. Let me rephrase that. There's no... Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So... Yeah, that, that's it, my premise. Yeah. Perfect. Is it possible to transgress against this? This is Exodus 20 and 2. Sorry, Exodus 20 and 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Is it possible to have other gods before Yahweh? Um, yes, because I, my reference would be Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse uh, 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them, the corruption of life. Any deity that's besides Yah Al Shaddai is an invention and that's spiritual fornication. Okay. But well, it's possible to have other gods before Yahweh. I, I see what you're saying, but um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's my premise. But remember, remember my whole conclusion that if someone does take another deity besides the Most High God, it is not a real being because there is no real God besides the one God. But according to this scripture right here, it's possible to have other Allahayim other than Yahweh. And that is Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, yeah? Can. So-called um, Ten Commandments. Yeah, that's, that's the first commandment. Yeah, that's the first commandment. So, in a, I would feel like I'm going to go in a philosophy rant real quick. In a subjective sense, someone may have another deity, but that deity is not true in reality. So objectively, that is not the real God. Like someone can pray to um, B-U-D-D-H-A or T-H-O-R, but they're not really existent. The only one that really exists is Yah Al Shaddai. That's interesting that you, you answered like that. Because is that according to the Bible why you wouldn't um, you wouldn't make mention of those uh, so-called deities? Yeah, that, that's why I'm not saying their name. Okay, let me let me just show you this though. I can't even spell, bro. I'm trying. To... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Israel Salah, and anyone else that may be listening for the circle point. Exodus twenty three thirteen. It says, "And in all things I have said unto you, be circumspect and make no mention of the name of other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth." So by obeying this um, this scripture right here, you're acknowledging B U D D H A as another god. If you think about it, if we're talking philosophically, yeah, some people do reverence that being or that person. Uh, his real name was Gautama. They reference him as the god or a god. What what I'm saying is by the fact that you've said um, you spell out the name rather than saying it verbatim is that you've identified this is another god. Um, so there's other gods according to the scripture, isn't it? I, I don't want to sound contradictory, but yes and no. Because like, like my whole premise has been, just because someone does say, you know, there's another god, doesn't mean it necessarily is a god. It, it's like a vain imagination. Is that for all of the, the gods of the nations are idols, but Yahweh made the heavens? Yep. So um, I'll just, I just wait for that phone call. Um, I think that might disrupt us for now. We'll just hold on for now. So I'll read it. Psalm 96 and 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but Yahweh made the heavens. And I'll just wait for confirmation from brother to make sure he's here and with us.
So I'll just go through this again, just to give you a um, refresh your memory. So I'm saying all these scriptures, although they say they are no God. Okay, okay, he's back, he's back. Hey, what's up, guy? Um, all, all I've gone through is I've just read this verbatim, the scripture we agreed on, Psalm 96 and 5, so I'll read it again. It says, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but Yahweh made the heavens. So these idols here, are they the gods of the nations? Yes. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, and there's, but there's only one God. Brother? You asked me a question, Ark? Yeah, but so, so the idols are gods of the nations, but there's only one God. Khan. Okay. Um, I, I, you, if you have a question at any point, go ahead with it, but I'm just going to push on through the ones I've got. But I, I'm not saying, um, yeah, make your points where you can or where you wish. So Exodus 7 and 1, it says, And Yahweh said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. So this is Yahweh acknowledging unto Moses that Moses was made a god. Do you agree with that? He was made Alahayim. Woody. One more. Yeah, my bad, brother. No worries, no worries. Um, I'll say that again. So Exodus 7 and 1, it says, And Yahweh said to, unto Moses, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. So do you agree that um, Moses was made a god to Pharaoh? Yes. Okay, but there's only one god. And is that a question or a statement, brother? It's a question. Okay, and the question is, oh, that because um, the Most High has made Moses like a god to Pharaoh. It doesn't say like a god. It says, see, I've made thee a god in the translation I've got. And uh, do you mind going scrolling down and let me see the, uh, the Hebrew? Oh, yeah. You see that? Yeah, do you I mean see, the uh, specific words? Yahuwah. Or Yahuwah. So, so Yahweh al Masha, Yahweh to Moses, Ra to see, and then it says Natha Tha Yak, and I'm not sure what that means. That, oh, oh, Nathan. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I can't read. Oh no, I can. That's what it says. Yeah. So I've given. It's like um, the, uh, what's the in in the Lord's Prayer in Paleo Hebrew? You'd say Nathan Alana, Nathan Ala. Sorry, Nathan Alana, meaning give to us. So it's like I've given the a prof uh, uh, sorry a god la meaning unto para ayo aki you mind if i see the transliteration if you could scroll down please yeah, unto yeah. most and uh, oh, i have made the a god and elohim right okay so that's the word is elohim right thank you okay, okay. so this bit literally says um yahweh to moses see given to you a god unto Pharaoh. Oh, more so given yours, not given to you, given yours. So, um, if you've got any questions or comments, like I say, let them fly. Otherwise, right. I'm trying to push on to the next. No, but what what I would like to see is like, how would you explain that verse? Well, he he was made a god. He was made a power unto Pharaoh. He was made like if you revile Moses' judgment or, or advice, I guess. What would you call that? A what's it called when you go to someone and like um, reprove someone, and if you don't accept that reproof, you'll face the judgment. We know ultimately he did, so that's why I say because Moses had that power given by Yahweh, who is the one true God. All right, you don't get that twisted. Would you would you um, refute me saying? as opposed to him being made a power, that the power was working through him? No, he was made a power for the power to work through him. Because the power was working through him, he became a power. Similarly, um, I was going to go through to him. Um, I can't remember what, what's that scripture. It says, he judgeth among the gods. 
set it in the um let me find that. And then we'll go back to that scripture and, and wrap up on that. Yes, yeah, Psalm eighty two and one it said, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty, he judgeth among the gods. So it doesn't mean the power's working through them, because it's literally it is calling them gods. Mashah was called a god. The gods of the nations are idols. Psalm eighty two and six, obviously that's a classic one. I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the most high. So the children of the most high are known as gods. Allah Hayyam. Do you get me? Yeah, I got you, brother. Okay, okay. Um Exodus seven, do you have any other comments? No. Okay, okay. So I've got Deuteronomy ten and seventeen. This one sort of you might not agree with um my understanding, but I'll I'll We'll go ahead. Deuteronomy 10 and 17, it says, For Yahweh your God is God of gods, and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doth execute ju the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. So what do you think it means, God of gods? He is the power of all powers. He is what is he? Sorry. My fault. Um... Go ahead. No, because I, I feel like I already know what your next question would be. Like, oh, I, ah, there's no other powers. <laughs> right. You know me well. <laughs> you know me well. Yeah. Um, do you mind going to the transliteration of that verse, please, bro? I'm yeah, sorry to keep asking you. No worries. No. So it says, Yahuwah, Elohim, Elohim. Yeah, Allah Hayakam, meaning your God. Oh, okay, okay. Elohim, can you go down a little bit? Because I yeah yeah. I get, oh, trans. Did you say transliteration? And I've just yeah sat yeah. Sorry. So I, yeah, I'm not That's able fine. to read the Hebrew yet. It, it says like Elohim like three times in a row. Right right right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like, yeah yeah. It does it does it. Yeah, it literally does in the um, Masoretic as well. Okay, all right, yeah, cool yeah. cool. So the so there's a, okay. There's no real distinction apart from this Al, which oh. is where we see the Arabic word Allah in my understanding be um derived from. So there's there's no real distinction. This this Elohim is an Elohim of Elohims. So you say there's only one Elohim or, or God, but clearly there's multiple Elo, Elohim, Elohim, Elohim. Um can I can I make a point? You can. Do you believe that angels are Elohim? Yeah. So would Yah Al Shaddai be the god of the Elohim? Yeah. All right, that, that's, all, that's all I would say to that. And the Israelites. Yeah, because we're his children. And he'd also be above, we know he's above all gods, let me get that too. Meaning above all the idols I interpret that as. And, and the Israelites and the angels, he's above all gods. So First Chronicles 16, 25, For great is Yahweh and greatly to be praised, he also is to be feared above all gods. For our God is above all gods. So if he's above all gods, what's my question going to be? Ah, I thought there was no other gods. There we are. <laughs> there we are. Perfect. So you see, you see where I'm going with it, innit? He's above all gods, and that's the same um, psalm that says, for the gods of the nations are idols, meaning he's literally above these idol gods. That's why I said I interpret it as that. And you know what? With the way you're putting it, I'm not going to fight you on what you're saying. Okay. But the Islamic viewpoint is that all those idols shouldn't be reverenced. Like, for me to identify them as a god is almost shirk according to the islamic uh theology and shirk is um idolatry or it's a blasphemous type of thing so well, for we, me, what's up bro i was just gonna say we're talking about circumnavigating a rock and saying that we shouldn't um reverence anything like that uh, that seems contradictory but that's that's why i wanted the title or the um the topic specifically to be according to the bible because i know as far as you hold to this or as long as you hold to this, you will always have that as the, um, the what would you, I don't want to say twist like twisted. Well, yeah, it's twisted. Quran is twisted in my opinion, obviously, but that you will always have that unique flavor. That's what I'm trying to say. You'll always have that leaning. But that's why I'm saying specifically biblically, whether we say they should exist or not, clearly there's multiple gods. Okay. And I understand everything you're saying. And you made an interesting point about the circumnavigation of a rock. If you remember, if you look into the scripture, the rock is not hewn with human hands. No one carved it, so it's not a stone figure. That's one point. And the next point I'll say is this. Uh, I would use Isaiah chapter 45, verse 5, 
And in Isaiah, honestly, there's multiple references to the Most High saying, besides me, there is no other. So if I use those as my, I guess you could say, thesis, someone couldn't tell me I'm wrong either. Because if I'm, if I'm looking at this, I can easily say, oh, ah, the Bible's contradictory. But that's why I'm having a conversation with you to reconcile these differences. You know what I'm saying? Right. Come. Well, I definitely, even if it's not hewn, I'm not saying it's a carved stone. Nigga, that's still a rock, isn't it? That's still a stone. You can't get like, come on now. That's still a stone. But I'll deal with this as well. Isaiah 45 and 5, it says, I am Yahweh and there is no, none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Meaning there's no other God. There's no other, whether it be an angel, an Israelite man, whether it be Yahweh Shai Mashiach, there's no other power comparable to him in that sense. Yes, or uh, he thought he not robbery to make himself equal. We're not getting into that, into the, unless you want to bring that up, we'll deal with that if you do want to. But I'm just saying in terms of um, power, might, strength, fortitude, there's nothing comparable in that sense. You can't put anything on the same level as, that's why even Yahweh Shai's head is still Yahweh. Yeah, and, and that brings me to John chapter 17, verse 3. Not okay. to be jumping all over the place. No, Khan, that's a good point. Do you, want to start, do you mind if you start at 1 or I start at 1? Bro, go, yeah, of course, Khan, go ahead. John 17, 1 through 3. These words spake Yahweh Shai and lifted up his voice, sorry, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy son, that thy son may also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Yahweh Shai Mashiach, whom thou hast sent. Do you want to give a, an understanding or an exegesis on that? Then we could um, go back and forth on that. You know, I just, I thank you for reading that. And um, that's a big verse for my for my side of the argument because this is coming from the messiah's lips supposedly or allegedly and he's saying this is eternal life that they might know thee the only true god so for me to say in the beginning my premise that there is only one god yah al shaddai i feel like coming from the messiah it justifies what i'm saying because you know for me to say that b-u-d-d-h-a is a god I don't agree with that. That may be someone else's God, but that is just an idol. Ooh, you, you made you know a good I'm point saying? there. You said that it may be someone else's God. That's what I'm heavily going on. All right. Um, not, not, like you said, not to jump around everywhere. I, I, I do want to come back to this, but just on that, on that point, if you were to um, have Buddha before Yahweh, would that be... Oh, well, I ended up saying it anyway. <laughs> um, uh, can God forgive us? It's okay. Okay. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. If you had B-U-D-D-H-A, I can't even think about how to spell it. That's difficult. I don't even want to. Anyway, that, right? that big fat, whatever it is, bro. The smiling fat guy? The smiling fat revi- man. Remember, we can't revile them, though, bro. No, no, no. Let's not. Oh, man. A serial <laughs> gun jumper. No worry about that. <laughs> yes, we can revile those. We can revile those. Oh, oh okay, okay. I want, let's get that. Is what's that, Exodus yeah. 22, 28? Yeah. I need an understanding on that, that too. I will tab that. Um, if you were to have that smiling fat man as uh, uh, above Yahweh, would that be having another God before him? Yes. Ooh. Okay, so you're saying my man's a God, isn't it? Here we are, here we are, here we are. Perfect. All right. No, no, no. Let's do it in order. Sorry, my fault. All right, John 17 and 3. So the the only true God. I did make reference to Yahweh as the only true God. Again, yeah. I'd exegete it similarly to Isaiah 45, uh, 5, what is that, 43 and 11? Let's just get that quickly as well. Yeah, that was, that was in my notes as well, bro. Okay, okay. Um, that's, is this what I'm looking for? So, oh, let's get 12 too. I'm going all over the place, Salah. I'm not dealing in order. I, even I, am Yahweh, and beside me there is no savior. Obviously, that would be a God, in it? A God. So, leave that there. Leave that there. All right, so the only true God is meaning he's, his power is uncomparable to. If you're saying the Messiah was like him, yes, he was. He had the same message, the same sentiments, and a lot of things similar. But was he the same? Is he as powerful? No. We know all power was given in earth to him, but who was it given by? The ultimate power who no one can compare to, and that is Yahweh. 
Question, comment, smoke? Uh, I, I would say con to that, bro. Okay, okay, perfect. Let's go to... Um, this, is a, this is a good phrase that I never even thought to bring out. Isaiah 43 and 12, I have declared and have saved I, and I have shewed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, saith Yahweh, that I am God. That's where um, Jehovah's Witnesses get it from, I think. Anyway, strange God, can there be, is there such thing as strange gods? You asking me, Aki? Yeah, Khan. Uh, yeah, from what I'm reading, the references of, yeah, there's like seven references almost. But isn't there only one God? So this is what, clearly there's a, a seemingly contradictory narrative on both sides, but yeah. I think we we are being consistent to say yes, there's other powers that others worship, like the gods of the nations are idols, but they're not comparable in any way to the true Most High that made the heavens. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get to Exodus 22. And 28, it says, Thou shalt not revile the gods, nor curse the ruler of thy people. So I think this is talking about the judges. Because, oh, let me try to find a, a, a verse where it says judges, please. Right, judge. You see that there? Only five times. Go look for that. All right, look, look. Exodus 21 and 6, it says, Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the dull post and his master shall bore his ear with an awl and he shall serve him further i believe that's talking about a hebrew hebrew servant yeah yeah, yeah. all of that anyway um judges this word here judges if we look at the transliteration it actually goes into the word alahayim so when we're talking about not reviling the gods i don't think that means you can't revile idols let's get the hebraic word for revile here revile kualal Curse, swifter, light thing, vile, lighter, despise. Obviously, contextually, all of them are not going to make sense. Curse, despise. Y you get what it's saying. Right, so I'm, I'm not saying you can't um, revise, despise. What is it? Revise. Revile, despise, curse the idol gods, so-called. But it's talking about the judges of your people. Because it says, nor the ruler of thy people. So that would be like a king in a certain time frame. The gods would be the judges. That's my understanding of that. And from that understanding, I agree. Okay. The, B, the B U D D H A or T H O R. Smiling are not, fat man. Yeah, they're not. They're not supplied by our power per se. So, um, we can. It's righteousness to hate what the Most High hates. So, it's good to revile things that are idle. Okay. Okay. Um, Genesis 35 and 4, it says, And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. So, strange gods again, innit? That's all I've got with that. I think I've got something else in Exodus 20. Exodus um, 20 and 23. Do you mind if you read this and then give your understanding on that, please? Uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 23. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. Okay. So what's your understanding of that? Um, my understanding of that is this would definitely be a works, a craftsman's work. And, you know, um, how can someone say to something that can't talk or hear, that they are a god. Um, that's completely idolatry, and that's someone completely going off. So, by your own understanding, just be careful you don't go completely off then. These gods of silver, are they called gods? Khan, yes. Yo, let's rewind the tape 10 seconds. I get what you mean. We can't worship them and say, yo, they've got so much power. They're powers that have no power. So people worship them as power in themselves, like in the idol itself, it doesn't have any power. I get where you're going, but when you say there's no gods, I think we're getting too caught up on an English term of God and thinking it means Yahweh. Do you get what I mean? 
Yeah, I, I could shake your hand on what you're saying, but I see what you're saying. Um, and I think we're getting closer to reconciling it, but I'm not sure I can totally go all the way and say there are other gods, honestly, because of my Islamic bias. And Islam, for me to even say that is shirked. Like I can't even I can't even acknowledge that other gods even exist. You know what I'm saying? To the Bible, I say this. You know, I just take the evidence of you know Isaiah when the Most High says, "Besides me, there is no other," and I, I take those as my strong my strong points of evidence. Right? Is it not written in your law, ye are gods? You're asking me. Mm. Uh, are you asking me like I'm the Pharisee, bro? Oh, no. <laughs> no, what I say to that is, um, and I hope I'm not being blasphemous, but anyone who does the will of God can be a child of God. And what that means is a judge or a ruler only by sanctification and grace of the Most High. So just off myself, I have no power. But Yah, I should die by His grace if I follow His will and believe in His law. I can be his child. Therefore, he can work through me. So I, I'd say, um, when you say whosoever does the will, that's like if you're writing in a, in a Pauline context to the saints, which are Ephesus or something like that, I would agree. But um, do, how, where, where do you stand on Paul, just real quick? Do you agree with his epistles or to somewhat, do you listen to them? Where do you stand right now? Right now, I read them for edification. I'm not going to sit here and judge him. I know at the last day, the goats and the sheep will be sifted. And that's all I'll say right now. I thought for right. I used to judge him before, but I, I, I'm not able to sit here and be like, oh, he's going here or going there. I'm not going to do that. Okay. I, read, I read it and I have fellowship with Christians and I have fellowship with people who read him and uh, I get a lot of good things out of it. So that's, that's okay. what I'm saying. I, I'd like to draw your attention to um, Romans 9. Obviously, it might not hold as much weight as a, well, clearly it won't as a, uh, Torah, prophets, the synoptic gospels, etc. But we'll just go here for edification of, well, yourself and audience. So Romans 9 and 7, it says through 8, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise, accounting for the seed. In the same chapter, Paul said the, um, the promises pertain, pertain to Israelites. So who, who would these children of the flesh be here? You said everyone's a, a child of God, but it, let's, let's go hypothetically. If you were to try and reconcile Paul's letter, who would these children of the flesh have to be? That'd be Ishmael. Alayso. Okay, okay. So Ish, it, the Ishmaelites would be not children of God, but children of the flesh. So that's why I brought that out. But, um, okay. Deuteronomy, do you have any questions, comments, smoke? <laughs> No. Okay. Deuteronomy 28, 36, it says, Yahweh shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there thou shalt serve other gods, wood and stone. So a wood and stone gods. In this context, yes. Beautiful. Um, what do I have left? I don't really think I've got any any... Any other points to make, really? Um, Exodus 34 and 17. Thou shalt, thou shalt, sorry, I can't read. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. So can you make molten gods? Is that possible to transgress this commandment or statute? Well, if he's giving a command to, to uh, say not to, that means someone can do that. Right. Um, in the context of that, yes. So... To conclude, there is multiple gods according to the scripture, not according to the Quran, but according to the Holy Bible, there would be, it's possible to make other gods, more than one God. Can I make a few points, Aki? Yeah, of course. All right. Uh, what I would go to is Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39, and say that, see now that I... I am he, and there is no God besides me. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 35, he is God. There is no other besides him. And in verse 39 of that same chapter. Wait, sorry, chapter, what is that? I misheard you. Oh, sorry, Aki. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 35. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got yeah, the right yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. And Salah. in the same in the same chapter in verse 39, it says there is no other. Um my my main point is to say that you know there is only the one God, Yah, and whatever power someone else has is only by him giving it. There is no power besides him. Other people may have deities, but those deities are false and they're idols. What I would say to conclude is that um, you may be a judge. I may be a judge. The Most High knows best, right? But I would never bow down to you. I would never want you to bow down to me and say that, oh, you know, pray to me or anything like that. Um, I, I even believe that we're not even supposed to pray to Yahweh Shai. We're supposed to pray in his name. So um, that's really all I would say about that. And you asked me a question about Paul. Although I don't believe he is a real apostle, I do read his works because they may or may not be inspired by God. If they're inspired by God, you know, then I might be wrong. If they're not, then that leads more credence to my argument about the Quran being true. So that, and that, that's pretty much all I got to say. This uh, conversation was really edifying, was full of love. There was no, nothing crazy about it. It was in order. And I thank you for, you know, giving your time and energy to this cause. You're doing a lot of good work, bro. Appreciate you, King. Always, man. Always appreciate beauty for the Yaramayahi. Yes, sir. Do you mind if I ask one last question before we wrap up? It might spark a whole another <laughs> half an hour, <laughs> hour. Well, um, just really quickly. Yes. Oh, uh, to, well, a, a line of questions, maybe three or so, maybe more. No, no problem. I try, I try to keep it um, to the minimum. But is it is it wrong to worship Yahweh? Are these three questions in conjunction with each other, or I have to yeah, answer yeah. each one? Okay. Yes, wrong please. To worship Yahweh. Oh, so it was a long. Uh, Um, according to my understanding, yes. And if someone was to worship him, which was would be wrong according to your understanding, would he tell them not to? If it was wrong, if it was a sin to worship him, um, would he tell them it was a, it was wrong? Or if someone came and worshipped him, would he say, don't worship me? Well, that's an interesting thing because, um, not to get out of context, some people were worshipped in the past. Like, people did obeisance, like they would bow. Mm -hmm. You know, some people would bow to a king, you know. Um, but in, in the context of, like, praying to, that, that's what I mean. Because even the saints in the end are going to get bowed down to. Is, it, is that... Um... Biblically, is that referred to as worship? I think it might be, bro. I think it might be. Okay, okay. Well, I, I was just trying to be tricky, I guess, because I, too, agree we don't uh, pray to Yahweh Shai. We pray in his name. So uh, I was just going to go to Matthew 8. I'll read verses 1, two, one through 3. <laughs> 1, 2, 3. Uh, that too, I guess. It says, When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Yahushai put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. But when we go into this word worshipped, it's proskuneo. And, but the, the Greek word for worship is in, oh, is it, is it, does, it, does John 17 say worship? Um, what's, oh, let me try to think of one way it's going to say. Anyway, basically, you know, like how I harp on um, monolatry, when you call me a polytheist, I say, no, I'm not a polytheist. I'm actually a monolatreist. I guess I'm a polytheist. There is multiple gods. I acknowledge that, but I don't worship them. Uh, uh, mono, mono, what did I say? Monolatry. In contrast with idolatry, it goes back to the Greek word latreia, and I'm going to try and find that right now. But we're allowed to proskuneo, like uh, bow down before, but we'd never um, latreia. As Israelites, we wouldn't latreia another god. Do you get me? Oh, I, I see what you're saying, bro. And um, thank you for elucidating. Is there more you can elucidate on the monolatry 
for the yeah, audience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just go to this real quick because the same words, uh, uh, user proskuneo. Um, let's get this. Uh, Revelation 3 and 9, which Brother made reference to, it says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Now, does that mean they're going to give burnt offerings to us? No, but it does mean a, a literal bowing, like the Buddha said. Now, let's, what's, what's the... Um, what am I looking for, man? When it says worship, if anyone can... <laughs> anyone can dash it in the comments, man. You know, after the video, if you don't find it. All right, here we are. This is what I'm looking for. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must, must worship him in spirit and truth. Hopefully, most high willing, this should be the word latreia. No, proskuneo. Okay. We'll keep going. Because you obviously that can that can be used towards the father, but I'm guessing it's the same chapter is gonna say that yeah, proskuneo. Let me oh man. Where's that word used, bro? I worship, let's try this. They're all just gonna be proskuneo, aren't it? Oh here we are. I latreu. Perfect. I latreu, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so it's G3000, which sounds like a, um, a super uh, electric skateboard or something. Strong's G3000, Latruo. Latruo. Now, I think in the, in the thing, this does say of, does it say of man? Yeah, it says either to gods or man. I could be actually mistaken in that. Anyway, we'll read all these. To serve for hire, to serve, minister to, either to the gods or men and you used alike of slaves and freedmen in the NT to render religious service or homage to worship, to perform sacred services, to offer gifts, to worship God in the observance of the rites instituted for his worship of priests, to officiate, to discharge the sacred office. Obviously we don't lean on this and say this is perfect, but it does most of the time give a good, a good clue. Okay, so him only shall thou serve, Latreo, that we might serve him, that's talking about, um, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who visited and redeemed his people. We're talking about served God the Most High, that's talking about the same account as in Matthew 10, sorry, <laughs> Matthew 4 and 10, my bad. Um, let's get this. And said, God, after that, they should come forth, serve me in this place. God turned and gave them up to worship the hosts of heaven. So that's talking about idolatry. Idol Latreia. So they're Latreying unto idols, isn't it? I worship the God of my fathers, it's that you serve in the most high God, um, angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Okay, this is an interesting one then. If we read that in context. But yeah, that, that's, um, I want to make this too long. But, so I could be mistaken about it only meaning um, service to the most high God, but it's clearly talking about serving in it, as in that it's, it's talking about they bowed down to him, they proskuneered to him, uh, literally bowed down. But they didn't worship him as the most high. We shouldn't worship him as the most high, according to what I understand of scripture. So this is a good one. Romans 1 and uh, 25. We changed the truth of God into a light and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. And we know the word, Yahweh Shai is the word, but the word still came forth from Yahweh. So it would be a cre creation of him, the firstborn of every creature, but a creature nonetheless. So unless you have any questions or comments or smoke, <laughs> then we'll close out there if you're happy to. Nothing really to add. I think you didn't add the third question though. You had two, you only added, asked the two questions about the proskuneo, uh, the, the, is it wrong to worship Yahawashai? And then we talked about the revelation and we talked about in Matthew, um, but you didn't ask the third question, if if um, if you remember it. Um, I didn't. I didn't necessarily have three, but I just thought it was dependent on your answers. But your answers were very concise, so the water for that, I didn't actually have to use all of the questions. So I don't necessarily have another one. But it's um. Uh, my last question is: Are you happy to wrap it up? I guess. <laughs> yeah, I just have to ask you one question. It doesn't necessarily do. Uh, it's it's a little off the topic, but. Okay. Do you believe that Yahweh Shai, peace be upon him, is Yah Al Shaddai incarnate or just the word incarnate? He is the word. The word made flesh and dwelt among us. He's not the most high. The most high never left his throne. He his his head is the most high. When he was um in in affliction, he said, Well, he basically called upon Yahweh and said, Why hast thou forsaken me? 
as it's written in the Psalms as well. So clearly, no, he has a God. He can't be the most high God because then there'd be a God above him. Then clearly, by definition, he's not the most high. He's just very high as a God, but he's not the most high God, according to what I understand of scripture. And how did he attain that status as a high judge, a high ruler? Well, it was, it was already preordained, pre-decreed before the foundation of the earth. Before he, the Garden of Eden? Way before. Before Genesis 1 and 1, to my understanding. So if we're going to get a little metaphysical, um, that word was in the mind of the Most High God? Every, everything that has been, will be, wait, wait, has been, is, and will ever be, was already conceived by the Most High. Conceived, like a, like a seed, like you mean like a No, a no, 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 no. Like um, if I said a preconceived notion that you had a screwdriver okay. when someone came into your house, you're more liable for judgment than if it wasn't a preconceived idea and you just picked it up and grabbed it. Okay. So just conceived to come together. Let me just find the etymology because I'm not really aware of that. Using words out here, I'm not sure. How do you spell that? E before I. Okay, okay. We'll just read this. Um. So it's probably the second definition. So the audience can read that, but I'll just go here. Meaning to take into mind to form a correct notion of mid 14th century, the dark ages. So it makes sense why I used it like that, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, anyway, take, yeah, it does mean that. It does mean to literally conceive, but it says con, um, and then where's it go? To grasp. If you say, do you, do you have a grasp? Um, did you grasp the understanding that I prevent, uh, presented for today? You might go con. So you can you um you know what I'm saying, bro. It's been a yeah. long day. But yeah, the word for that man. If you're happy or if you have any you have any? No, I think you answered what I uh my question very concisely. And uh that's kind of the way I think about it as well. I think that uh you know, that was a thought. It wasn't um, physical form yet. And then the physical form came and had to carry out a mission. Can't, can't. Um, and I would, I would, um, if anyone's interested in hearing more of, I guess, well, it seems that Brother Yarama Yahu holds to, so obviously it's going to have nuances, but somewhat to what I um, hold to on that, I'd say check is uh, Christ the Father and is Christ the Most High. Two spiritual spas I've got up on my channel. They may have be of some interest and edification unto the nation. Yeah, um, Ak, can you send me the Zoom uh, things for this also, bro? The the recording? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, right. I think I've got your email in it. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, I, I'll I'll message you. I'll message you. I'll, me <laughs> I'll say it again. I'll message you. Anyway, with that, we give Mashna Kabad, Lazakwa Wambi Ashra Mao Shal Sadak, Kalthahala, Thi Yahawa, Ba'asham, Yahawa Shai. Shalom as well. Shalom.